Hey guys, this is Justin. Hello and welcome to another video. So, although I was, I think, fairly critical of the Halo series premiere, it certainly wasn't all bad. Although some of the special effects have been drawing some ire online, I think the shots of the cities and the ships in particular were really well done. So, I thought I'd take a look at every spaceship that appears in this first episode, everything from transport size all the way up to capital ship. Let's get started, and the first vessel that we really see in the Halo TV show is a Phantom. I was hoping we'd see some of the space tech that the innies are working with. We do see a small ground vehicle moving away from the main base, but nothing space worthy. The Phantom is one of the two most famous Covenant dropships, alongside the tuning fork shaped spirit, and comes in several different configurations with variable weapon loadouts and more. It first appeared in Halo 2, where it replaced the spirit as the primary dropship for the Covenant. I will also note too, at this point, although I'm jumping around chronologically, we do also get that one brief scene where we have the Banshee. The next major ship featured in this episode was the UNSC Condor. The Condor is like the bigger brother to the Pelican, and from a distance it's kind of difficult to tell the ships apart, so where one of these ships appears in the background of other scenes, I'm not going to differentiate the two. However, we do get a good look at the size difference between the Condor and the Pelican in one of the final scenes of the episode, and unsurprisingly the Condor essentially would have been used in situations where the crew needs more space space, more equipment, or just more firepower than the Pelican could bring to bear. It makes sense for Silver Team in this case because they're operating away from reach, they don't have a carrier vessel, they need something that can work long range, so the Condor is perfect. It's also not new to the universe, the Condor first appeared in Halo Nightfall, but was most prominently featured I would say in Halo Wars 2. It's also not the only UNSC dropship named after a large bird. Another example would be the Albatross, which features, albeit only in a crash state, in Halo 3 and 2. As a final note, because I figure we will be seeing a lot of this ship, I'm going to guess that Chief's Condor, when compared with something like a Pelican, which he may have to face off against at some point, probably has better armor, heavier weapons, some advanced communication features, and probably a unique stealth system, given again that this is not only a heavier and more well-equipped ship, but also designed for Spartan teams. The next scene with a ton of ships is this one at the planet Reach. Now, for those who don't know their lore, Reach is a military, industrial, and economic center for the UNSC, and arguably the most important planet outside of Earth. It seems like Halsey and the Spartans may also be stationed here, so it's unsurprising that the planet has a fairly significant military presence. In this scene, we can see two Halberd-class destroyers. These seem to be holding position over this important UNSC structure which is something we'll see later on, but with different ships. Destroyers in Halo lore are essentially heavier and more well-armored versions of frigates. The Halberd was lighter than a lot of UNSC ships and smaller than most frigates even, but was very well-armed and they typically operated in packs of several ships and would thus be used to overwhelm an enemy through coordinated firepower. The most famous Halberd was most likely the UNSC Iroquois, which was Keyes' ship before the fall of Reach and the ship he used to complete the Keys Loop. There's several other small ships over the city that are kind of hard to read out. Most of them are just way too small to get a good look at. There are clearly several drop ships. Again, probably a mix of Condors and Pelicans. Mostly Pelicans, I think, though, and perhaps other small ship classes. I also do think I see a Gladius class Corvette, which is a very small UNSC ship type that we also saw on one of the other trailers. Moving on, though, we have High Charity, and the fleet around High Charity, I think, is portrayed in a pretty lore accurate way. Halo First Strike describes it as being protected by hundreds of cruisers and carriers, which basically just held position in the space around High Charity, and that's also, of course, what we see in Halo 2. It seems like most of the vessels here are CAS class carriers. These are the very big Covenant capital ships that you see more rarely compared to something like a CCS class, but which is still a mainstay of the fleet. It's hard to tell that there may be some CCS mixed up in this scene as well. Some of the scaling on a few of the ships seems to be a bit wonky, but I mean, we're also talking about space, so whatever. As a note, this bottom section of High Charity here does operate as a series of many, many docking arms so that the space station operates not only as a mobile capital, but also as a star dock, refit, and refuel center. Moving now inside High Charity, we definitely do see a few CCS class cruisers here. These are like the workhorses of the Covenant fleet. I just went and double checked and there are some outside as well. These are ships that can do everything from ship to ship combat where they can easily take on several UNSC 
vessels with their powerful shields and weapons to glassing operations to troop landing and more. We do see phantoms as well. And there's also the distinctive shape of what I believe to be several SDV class Corvettes. They are very different compared to other Covenant ships because they've got that negative space in the middle. Plus, we did see a full version of one fighting a Gladius in the trailer. Then there's also this weird shot where it looks like there's the back of a CAS class, but if so, that thing is going way too close to the ground, although you don't see the front of the ship, so I don't really think it matters. Of course, then High Charity, there's the most mighty vessel we've seen so far, the Forerunner Dreadnought, known as the Anodyne Spirit. This vessel is not only an extraordinarily powerful Forerunner warship, but also provided the power for high charity. Going back to Reach, we have the last vessels that I want to talk about, a pair of stalwart class frigates. I talked about stalwarts in a prior video. These are clearly distinguished from other UNSC frigates by their engine block. Other ships have usually a small connecting section, then almost like wings or panels on the end of their engine blocks. The stalwart, on the other hand, is built like a piece of brutalist architecture, lots of really square connectors, and overall just a square shape. And I really like the stalwart. It's probably my favorite of the UNSC frigate classes, although I do like all of them. It's worth noting that these ships are basically taking the defensive role that the Halberd was holding earlier, and of course alongside them we see the usual fluttering of smaller UNSC vessels like dropships. So there are several different frigate types in the Halo games. Halo Reach gives us the Paris type, Halo 3 gives us the Charon class, and in Halo 2 we have the Stalwart, most famously the In Amberclad. What an awesome name for a ship, by the way. I'm kind of wondering whether the ship we see here is actually the model that Blur used when they were doing the Halo 2 anniversary cutscenes. That wouldn't be a knock on the show at all. I think that probably would make sense. In fact, those models are so high quality, they could definitely fit into live action with some tweaking. They're not identical, or at least the textures aren't identical, but it very well may be the same model overall. But at least as far as I can tell, those are all of the vessels and spaceships featured in episode one of the Halo TV show. And I'm going to stop you right there, past version of me, because as I was editing this video, I took a closer look at some of the Reach scenes, and although because it's so dark at the final sequence, it does seem like there are a few more ships, or at least one worth talking about. Most notably, when Chief's Condor is being shot down by the, I guess it's a magnetic accelerator cannon, we can see another one of those Gladiuses on the launch pad alongside perhaps another vessel. This may be a Prowler, I'm not sure. And I wouldn't doubt if in these sequences there may be more ships hiding in the background, but that's all that I found, and I doubt there's any new ship classes that I haven't covered previously. If there is, though, please make sure you let me know down in a comment, and if necessary, I can cover it in a future upload. All right back to the present. But at least as far as I can tell, those are all of the vessels and spaceships featured in episode one of the Halo TV show. It's very possible there's something else hiding in the dark sections of Reach at the end, but I think I got most of them. If I did miss something, please let me know down in the comment section. And would you like me to continue looking at the ships, space battles, and other interesting aspects of the Halo series moving forward? Listen, I've been critical, but I'm absolutely not writing this series off. I was enjoying parts of it, re-watching the episode for this video, and I do think even if it does turn out that the season is bad, there could be some cool stuff with spaceships or space battles. But let me know down below. I'll be reading all of your comments. Until next time, be safe, have a good one, and may the force be with you.